Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. I got another gimbal review for you today. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Gitzo Gimbal Fluid Head. A lot of people have asked about this one. And I'm gonna give you my impressions and my thoughts right after this. I've done a lot of gimbal reviews over the last year. And a lot of people reached out and they said, Scott, why haven't you reviewed the Gitzo? And I didn't have a great answer other than it's different and it didn't really compare to the other gimbals that I was reviewing. So I reached out to B&H and I said, can you send me the, uh, the Gitzo Fluid Gimbal? Let me take a look at it and I'm gonna do an independent review of this. As you know, when I do these B&H reviews, they loan me the product and I send it back to them. And I really feel like this gives the best, most unbiased review because I have nothing given to me directly other than I get to play with it. I get my hands on it, I get to feel it, I get to see if I personally like it. And there have been some products that I've tested and actually really liked and purchased. So it's great for me as a reviewer. I like getting my hands on new things and seeing how they work. With this particular gimbal, it is designed differently. So I'm gonna run through the specs real quick, and then I'm gonna tell you what I think the attempt is here. I'm gonna tell you how it's different than traditional gimbals, how it's similar to fluid gimbals, but also different, and then maybe who this is for. So as far as the specs go, this one comes in a little bit over $600 retail. Now I have seen it on sale, so check over on B&H. At the time I was recording this, it was actually down to $499. I'm gonna list the retail here at, at $639, but I have seen it on sale. Uh, it's rated to hold 17 and a half pounds. It's about three pounds in terms of total weight. Now that weight is a little on the high end for gimbals, but it's certainly within the margins of where most gimbals lie. So it's not a heavy, heavy gimbal. Um, and the load capacity is fairly low. But what I'm finding as I do these reviews, don't let load capacities determine the strength of, or, or make you think one unit is stronger because it's rated to hold more. Companies vary greatly in how conservative they are with these load ratings. And I will tell you, I think this is a very conservative rating. I've got my gear on here. It feels like it holds it no problem. I don't think there's any wildlife setup you could put on this gimbal that would challenge it. So don't worry about that. Uh, I would say very conservative load rating. I think this one's gonna be just fine. Now, let's talk a little bit about the design and how this is different. With traditional gimbals, I'll put a picture up here. This is my Katana Junior, very traditional gimbal. And these gimbals tend to use friction and bearings to get those lockouts to, to stay in place and then slow you, you back them off and you can get a little bit of resistance and eventually you can take that resistance off and it gets really, really smooth. Now this fluid gimbal is a little different. I can tell you right off the bat, it's not as smooth as some of the others, especially like the Katana Junior that I use. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means it doesn't ever get loose. It always feels like there's resistance there. The design of fluids head, fluid heads, and I'll make a simple design. There are very complicated designs out there, but for a, a inexpensive gimbal or a fluid head, for an inexpensive fluid head, Typically, you're gonna have like, let's say like layers of stacked discs. Now that, that could vary, it could be a different medium in there, but you're gonna get gaps in there. And then there's a fluid, and not fluid like water, very viscous, more like grease. And as those spaces condense and contract and, and get pushed together, that grease also gets smushed together and it creates more resistance. Now eventually you can lock those out. So some of them have a control where friction is actually locking it out, where you're just tightening it up so much it can't move anymore. And my guess is, and I do not know how this is designed. I can't take it apart because it's not mine and I'd be afraid to take it apart if it was. My guess is that there's some combination of friction that occurs in here when it locks out and that there is, um, when you turn these dials, it's just loosening up some mechanism, some cartridge in there to allow more space for that, that fluid, that grease to move around. Again, don't know that for sure. If somebody does know how this is built, if you've ever taken one apart, put it down in the comments. I would absolutely love to see that. Now, how does it feel? Because this is really what we care about. Who cares how it's built? How does it feel? How does it work in the field? Without the lens on it, when I first got this, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna like this. It felt stiff. Like, I mean, like, like it felt stiff. Once I put the gear on, felt a lot better. And it really was just the weight because now I'm, I'm moving with, I've got weight on there. So it felt pretty smooth. So the advantage of like a traditional gimbal, and I've got a Manfrotto, this is a 502. It's real popular style for wildlife photographers, mostly because the price is, is pretty cheap. Um, I can turn this 
Here I'm adding what they would call drag. So think tension, so I can add more tension here. It's got some lockouts here, and then I can control the tilt here. Now you will see with the Manfrotto, it kind of returns. It's got a spring in there that tries to counterbalance it. With heavy gear, it will flop. So remember, with, with traditional fluid heads, the, the lens on top, the center of gravity, is above the pivot or the fulcrum. So if it starts to turn, the center of gravity gets out in front and it, it flops. That is not good, by the way. That's the biggest problem I have with, with fluid heads in general is they flop. Well, this gimbal solves that problem because like a just like a traditional gimbal, you can balance it on the center of gravity. So if I tilt it up, guess what? It stays. If I point it down, it stays. That is the biggest advantage for me over the traditional fluid heads. So now I've got a fluid head that balances, and this could be really, really interesting. So I think we're off to a pretty good start. I told you it, it felt like it was tight, but with the lens on there, it didn't feel quite as bad. Now, here's, here's where I'm gonna be real honest. There's almost no control over tension. With my Katana Junior, with that fluid head, I can adjust it and make it a little tighter, add a little resistance, and eventually lock it out. With this, these lockouts, once I turn it off, that's pretty much it. I, I, I'm stuck with whatever resistance is built into this system. If, you, if it feels good to you, then you're in great shape. But if it doesn't feel good to you, just know that you, you're not gonna have a lot of ability to change that. With these panning knobs, um, one of the things I liked about them, one, I like the way these knobs felt. This top knob is really big. I like big, robust knobs up here, so really nice and big. This one felt really good, easy to adjust. But again, they lock out really quickly and then they unlock real quickly with no adjustment in between. So once this is locked out, I can unlock it quickly, that's great. But there's no control in between. Like there's no real, it's hard to add anything in between. So just know that. Again, out of the box, if, if, you, if it feels good, you put your camera on there and you're like, oh, this is the perfect resistance for me. I think you're all set. It is going to be smoother for video. So you don't get that, they call it like jitteriness with a gimbal. With a gimbal that's loose, sometimes when you're moving, like it's, it's actually kind of shaking a little bit. You'll see that if you're watching social media posts, you can tell who's taking video sometimes, either handheld or with a, with a gimbal that's not real smooth versus somebody who's doing it with a, with a professional video head or even just any real good fluid head. So just know that this is gonna be smoother and you can still do wildlife photography. You can still do birds in flight with it, but it gives you a huge advantage in video. Now, is it better than just getting a fluid head and doing it? I don't know. I, I kind of like my fluid head setup. Again, I just don't like that it's top heavy and can flop. So I did like the fact that this balances. A couple other things about this. So one of the things I didn't love, I'm gonna show you and then I'm going to, I'm gonna do a close up down here. This, it felt odd because when I turn this, you can see the, the tolerances weren't real tight. Like it was, I don't wanna say sloppy. Sloppy might be a strong word, but it just felt a little off. So the way it was manufactured, you could see it moving up and down when I go side to side. You see that dip in it? And then here's the other thing. I'm gonna to try to take my mic off. So hopefully I don't make noise when I do this. I apologize if I do. Um, so I've got this little lab mic. Oh, by the way, I want to share a story. I'm getting real professional. Let me show you a close-up of this. Uh, one of my videos, I got sloppy, and I just put my lav mic on, and I didn't tuck my mic cord down my shirt and hide it. And I have a friend that's a videographer. She ripped me. She said she couldn't even watch the video. It was so sloppy. So I am now uh, committed to, to neat and clean. And then she showed me how to do the broadcast. Let me do a close-up. Look at that broadcast loop, huh? Pretty slick, right? Yeah, they were, oh, we're getting big time here on the channel. All right, but the reason I'm taking this off is I want you to hear this. You can actually, oh, I hope I'm not making too much hand-holding noise on this mic. All right, let's see if you can hear this. There's a noise in there, and it's, it's I'm, I'm convinced, let me try not to make too much noise putting this back on. I'm convinced it's just how it's built. I don't think there's anything wrong with this unit, Whatever that cartridge is in there, it, it, it just has like a, like you can hear it. it. It doesn't sound great to me. It's not loud, but it's definitely there. I don't, I've never heard that on another gimbal I've ever tested. I've never heard that noise. It almost feels like there's, 
like, like, I don't want to say grinding might be a strong word, but you know, like that, that just sound like metal on metal almost. Somewhere in that, in this cartridge, there's something that's making that sound. I didn't love that. Again, does it affect my photography? Nope, not at all. But I am really, really picky when it comes to manufacturing. I love things that are well machined and have really nice tight tolerances and stuff like that. This one didn't actually feel that way. And for a Gitzo product, I, I think I expected, because their tripods are top notch. I think I expected just a little cleaner look and a little cleaner um, manufacturing and machining down here. So that's about all I have. I can tell you, when I took it out in the field, um, it felt pretty good for birds in flight. I did some uh, geese. I had some snow geese behind my house. Took it out there a few times. No issues with it. I had another gimbal that I also felt like this. It was the uh, Photo Pro Eagle series. Felt like it had a lot of tension and it was felt kind of stiff. But then when I was out in the field using it, it, it felt pretty good and it, it felt kind of smooth. So the advantage, again, it does feel pretty smooth. It's, it's a little... There's something in there. I'm telling you, there's just a little, like a little something in there that, that feels like it's almost like rubbing. Could be the copy that I got, but I think it's the system. But it is, it is smooth. It's not going to affect your photography at all. I think it's a good combination. So if you're a hybrid photographer looking for some videography and some photography, this could be a good option. But what I need you to know is you're not going to get a lot of control and the tension that comes with it is there. Like there is definitely resistance there. If you like these, you know, big knobs that tighten out real quickly and lock out, that's going to be a win for you. Um, one of the things I'm testing now, and I, I want to do one more test before I wrap up, is I'm testing what's called lens creep. So lens creep means when I, when I tighten these, these knobs on the side, will this lens move? When I tighten this, will it move? Now, I will tell you, my, uh, I, I showed you my Katana Junior. That thing's got a lot of variation in how much resistance I can put in. It does not lock out quickly. So it takes a lot of turns to lock out. I showed you this is the exact opposite. Almost no control or adjustment over tension, but locks out real quickly. The Katana Junior has a little bit of the, what's called lens creep, which means as I'm tightening it down, the lens is going to move a little. I never reviewed that feature because to me it doesn't matter. I don't do a lot of work that requires me to lock a gimbal out and keep it in one spot. Mostly when I'm doing gimbals, it's for birds in flight, occasionally songbirds, but almost always it's birds in flight. And then I also do some waterfowl. I use a totally different system for waterfowl, but I use a gimbal style for waterfowl. But I have a lot of people say uh, or co comment about lens creep. So I'm gonna start including this in reviews. And what, the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna point this at those snow geese, that, was picture, that picture back there. I'm gonna tighten the horizontal and tighten the vertical. And I'm gonna actually show you through the lens how much these things move. Now, let's start with the tilt, this top knob. And I'm just gonna adjust it here. I'll line it up on this. Okay, so there's no tension. And then I'm gonna go ahead right there and tighten this. You could see, really didn't move, right? Like you, you see, it's almost, you could see the camera and through the viewfinder. Loosen it up and tighten it again. Very, very little movement. I'll go down here to the bottom now. That top one's locked. I'm gonna loosen that up. And I did get a little bit more movement the first time. After I did it a couple of times, so there really wasn't any movement. So not too bad here. Not too bad. Again, for me, I don't really even consider that. But for a lot of people, that could be something that you want to consider. If you're doing video, especially if you want to lock it in on a subject, you, you know, you, you line it up and you just want to just want to record and you turn it and that lens is going to move and you're going to have to figure it out. Yeah, maybe that makes a difference for you. Uh, they do, by the way, include this little handle. I put it on. It's a very small handle. But um, it is included in the, in the kit that they sent. And so I just put it on here to show you that. I think that's all I got for you today, guys. This one, you know, I think there's a spot for it. I think there are some people that are really, really going to like this. Down in the comments, I am sure that I'm going to find some people that have used it or purchased it that say, I love it. It's my favorite gimbal. It's the perfect hybrid. It does the best of both worlds. Personally, after using it for, you know, I've, I've had this in the house for about three weeks. I've used it out in the field about three times, and then I played around with it a bunch down here in the basement. It's, to me, it was a hybrid that wasn't as good as either. So it wasn't as good as my fluid head, and it wasn't as good as my gimbal for me. There are people that probably will swear and say, no, this is the one. Down in the comments, I also want to know, did you ever try this and not like it? Did you buy it and return it? 
that would be a great comment to know what didn't you like about it. Did you find the same thing that I found, which is the built-in resistance seems a little strong and I can't adjust it. Like at the end of the day, that was, that was kind of the, the theme for me. If the resistance feels good, I think you're in great shape. If the resistance doesn't feel good, I think this one could be a challenge for you. So let me know down in the comments. Is there another product you want to see reviewed? So I can get my hands on a lot of products. Is there another gimbal? I've got some tripods coming up. You know, what is it out there that you guys want to see? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in for this one. Hopefully you found it helpful. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.